The early 1900s was a time of great change for American women and their roles in society. Two-thirds more women were pursuing higher education from 1870 to 1900. Women put aside their brooms and skirts to work in the stead of men fighting in World War I. This taste of equality and life outside the home gave women the extra initiative to seek further freedom for themselves, marching and protesting for the right to vote. However, when the 19th Amendment gave women the right to vote in 1920, many women still lacked freedom in controlling when and how many children they would have. This was caused by the passage of the Comstock Laws in the late 1800s, which outlawed the distribution of contraceptives and information about contraceptives. This law mainly affected middle and lower class women who lacked access to private physicians who could provide contraceptives. Although contraception had been common in previous years, even contributing to a 50% decrease in the number of children per family from 1800 to 1900, the social purity movement, which was mainly comprised of Protestant moral reformers and Victorian-era middle-class women, created opposition towards contraceptives, which were thought to encourage sexual immorality and neglect of a woman's duty to procreate. However, with the increase in women's power, independence, and education during the early 1900s, more women began openly opposing the Comstock laws. One of these was Margaret Sanger, a nurse who had seen the plight of four mothers who suffered frequent pregnancies and whose own mother had 18 pregnancies and died at 45 of associated health problems. She joined, she joined free speech activists but directed her efforts particularly at the Comstock laws, viewing birth control as a way to alleviate overpopulation and poverty caused by unduly large families and also a way to alleviate the suffering of mothers. Sanger launched the magazine The Woman Rebel to challenge the Comstock laws and also educate uninformed women about contraception. Although she was arrested and put on trial for founding America's first birthing clinic in New York City in 1916, her trial brought widespread publicity and support for the birth control movement. She continued by publishing the Birth Control Review from 1919 to 1920, then founded the American Birth Control League, which grew to be a dominating force in the movement. The birth control movement inspired great division between different parts of society. While supporters of birth control, some liberals and most women, believed that a woman should be able to have control of her own body and that sex should be used for pleasure, opponents of birth control, conservatives, religious leaders, and Catholics, believed that it was a woman's duty to have children and raise a family, or in the case of religious groups, believed that sex was only for procreation. Interestingly, eugenicists initially opposed birth control believing that limiting the number of children in white families would lead to immigrants and non-whites overwhelming the pure population. However, Sanger tried to expand the range of supporters by appealing to eugenicists, endorsing negative eugenics, or discouraging unfit humans from procreating. However, this tactic was somewhat counterproductive, as some supporters of birth control opposed eugenics. Nevertheless, by the 1920s, birth control became more widely known and accepted in the 1920s. As changing moral values and liberated sometimes lavish la lifestyles became more prevalent, when Margaret Sanger opened up another birth control clinic in 1923, this clinic was met with no controversy as a sign of the changing mindset and values of the nation. In fact, birth control had a significant impact in the 1920s and beyond. By allowing women to control if and when they had children, birth control provided women a new freedom that did away with old Victorian-era prudishness. Most obviously, it allowed women to take ownership of themselves and their bodies, and to have independence separate from men, encouraging the 1920s typecast of the flapper, a socially and sexually liberated woman. Extra and premarital sex also became more common. The birth control movement also had a profound effect on poor women, reducing family sizes and associated expenses. Politically, although anti-contraceptive laws still technically banned information and education about contraceptives, these laws were rarely enforced compared to previous years. Finally, since women could decide to have children later, they were able to pursue education interests and eventually careers previously kept from them due to familial responsibilities. In the long run, this also led to greater equality between men and women, a rise in the number of educated, professional working women, less sexual inhibition in, subse in subsequent generations, reduced medical costs for unwanted pregnancies and abortions, 
and the creation of a contraceptive industry. Birth control has evolved from being a taboo topic to being an everyday part of many women's lives. It is openly advertised and discussed and has caused humans to have less stifling views on sexuality and enabled women to become the mo modern women of today, now given the choice and control over her own body. Birth control has enabled women to live the fast-paced professional lifestyle of today.